today I'm going to help you think about how you could redesign your garden or any other outdoor space and make it a better home for wildlife. I want you to use your imagination to design a garden that's inspired by the habitats we find near to our canals and rivers. What could you do to attract more birds, bees, bugs and other wildlife and turn your garden into a corridor for nature? You're going to need a survey sheet. We've created one for you to use or you can make your own. A pen or pencil some plain paper, a ruler or tape measure, colouring pencils, pens or any other creative materials. And we've created a set of cards to tell you about six different waterside habitats. It's a good idea to read these before you begin. Let's get started. The first thing you'll need is your survey sheet. This will help you to draw up a map of your outside space and it will make it easier to decide which canal and river habitats you would like to recreate. I'm lucky to have lots of trees and a big hedge running along this side of my garden. Some of the trees are old fruit trees. A robin nested right down in the hole in the trunk of this old apple tree this spring. I've got a lawn here. The short grass is good for the birds to peck for worms but it's even better for wildlife if you let it grow a bit longer so the grasses can flower and meadow wildflowers grow through the grass. I've also got another patch of wild grass, a bit like the towpath alongside the canal which was originally built for horses to walk along when they pulled boats on the canal. This overgrown area is more like the scrubland habitat running between hedges and trees that you find near to rivers and canals. There is a tall wildflower with blue flowers that tiny insects seem to like and these nettles are great for butterflies to lay their eggs on and for caterpillars to eat so I don't want to get rid of them at all. Ah, now this could be another interesting area. I've got a pond with quite deep water, a bit like the deep water channel in the middle of the canal for boats to move along. Plants like these irises love this type of open watery habitat. This is only a tiny pond in the garden, but it still attracts a lot of wildlife. So we made this boggy area by putting a pond liner in, lining it with soil and then putting these plants in. So we've got some reed, some bog bean, and some water weed. Seeds of plants growing around the pond fall between stones and grow into flowers like these. The bees love going right inside the flowers to get the nectar. Oh look, I've found some tadpoles. Pond dipping in spring is a great way to find out about the life cycle of the frog. My garden also has a shed and a greenhouse. A little blue tit kept checking out the shed as well as our nest boxes to see whether to build a nest here. Buildings like these can be home to lots of wildlife visitors. You can make bird and bat boxes and bug hotels. It's a good idea to hang water containers and bird feeders around the garden too. Right, just one more question. I don't have any large areas of mud and I think that means my survey is complete. If you do have a muddy area, this can be great for bog plants and local water life. While it's all fresh in my mind, I'm going to go straight on to the next step, drawing a map of my garden. The easiest way to do this is to imagine you're looking down on your garden. On the survey sheet, you'll find some map symbols that you might like to use, and you could make up your own too. I think that's finished, so let's have a closer look together. You can see that I've marked on all the things we found. So there are two areas of water and a bog garden, hedge, trees, a lawn and a wild grass area, shed and a greenhouse, 
and of course that overgrown area at the top. I think that looks pretty good. Next, look at your map and decide whether you want to redesign one area or the whole space. Maybe take another look at the habitat cards to see if they help. Whatever you decide, it's really helpful to measure the area before you start designing. I've decided to focus on this boggy pond area and I've drawn up a separate map of this part of the garden so it's easier to mark on the measurements. I could improve this boggy area by putting some new plants in and taking out some of the strong weeds. I've cut the hedge back to allow more room for the bog plants as well. So now it's time to get creative. How can you redesign your garden? Imagine that you're a bird or another kind of animal and you're looking for a great place to hang out. Use your imagination, go wild and come up with a great design.